use headphones for best experience. Iceland. And I'll start with this uh, red paper today. But I um, kind of want to add some color before I start. Some more here. 
Now I'll take a short break, let this uh, dry a bit. See you soon. Okay. Now, let's get started with some details. I'm still a bit worried about this patch of ink here. It's not dry yet, but maybe I can use it somehow in the map. Let's start with uh, the coast, as usual. So this is the southernmost tip of Iceland. And then I'll start to draw the coast like this. Westernmost tip of Iceland is located in this region called uh, Vestilfirdir. The West Fjords is a lot of there are a lot of fjords here, as you can see. Even though all around the coast of Iceland there are a lot of bays and uh, fjords.
center area of Reykjavik. And I'll also like to add some islands. We have West Mana Eyjar located here. And the Surts A here somewhere. A small island called Eld A. And up at the northern coast, we have a small island called Grims A. First thing I'd like to add the inland of Iceland are the glaciers. There are a lot of glaciers. And the largest one is called Vatnajökull. area here on my map, I, I notice it now, it's a bit scaled down, it should be a bit more, yeah, it should be wider in a way. Where's the Vatnajökull glacier? Then we have the Hofsjökull located here at the center. Sounds like it's a long glacier, long. of the Eyjafjallajökull volcano in 2010 that caused a lot of trouble in the in the air traffic around the world with the ash cloud in uh, West Firutir you have a minor jökull as well that I 
생각 끝. 
or European uh, continent called the Raifajökull belt, I guess. And uh, the same here, we have um, another minor belt called the Snæfells Ness Ridge. So this belt is entirely in the North American tectonic plate. Let's see what's next. Maybe Lucky. eruption was in 1783 to 1784 and it was um, a huge um, volcanic eruption that was really a catastrophe. Now I think it's called Laka Kigar but the volcano was called Laki and I read that it it killed uh, one quarter of the Icelandic population not just during the eruption but I mean the consequences of it and also 80% of the livestock so it's really part of the Icelandic history the eruption of Lucky Hekla is a really famous volcano I've seen a super cool map from, I don't know, maybe the 16th century. You can find it on Wikipedia if you, if you search the page, um, what was it called? It was uh, the Icelandic Commonwealth. On that page you can see a really cool old map of Iceland with a lot of sea monsters. <laughs> I've never seen so many different sea monsters in one time. And in the middle of that uh, map, there's a huge painting of Hekla volcano. So it should be located here somewhere. Last erupted in 2000. And uh, this volcano have had like quite regular um, eruptions during the past uh, thousand years or so. Like 20 times, I guess since a recorded history and Hekla also has given the name for Hekla Hekelfjell, Swedish uh, like word in myths and legends and then we have on the island here uh, Westmanna Eyjar we have Eldfell, Eldfell volcano, erupted in um, 1973, last time, also with huge consequences. The Westmanna Eyjar were evacuated for six months. It um, it changes the landscape uh, landscape afterwards with all the ash and lava. And uh, we have Surts A, this small island. Actually, this island was created during a volcanic eruption in 19 between 1963 to 1967 so before that there weren't an island here so Surts A is a result of that eruption I want to add one volcano also here on the north so you can like see belt here somehow. We have Kravla. Kravla's uh, last or most
most recent um, eruption was in 1984. Okay, I said before that I maybe could use this remaining ink here. So yeah, I can still use it because I want to show you not so many lakes, but I'd like to point out two lakes and to show you that this also is um, part of the volcanic belt there aren't actually any volcanoes here I think but there are like a landscape of um, of uh, old lava there's a la lava landscape here that looks really cool like black black um, kind of rocks and um, also, here's where you can find the Blue Lagoon. It's located approximately here, where you can take a bath in uh, hot water from the ground. It's a geothermal spa. But it's quite, it's man-made and uh, it was opened in the, the early 90s, I think. But really healthy to take a bath. There are a lot of minerals in the hot water. And uh, the biggest natural lake in Iceland is... Uh, Think what la what think what or something like that. Um, close to Reykjavik, but a bit to the east inland here. Very important historical region around this lake. It's time for some cities, perhaps. Cities and towns. The entire population of Iceland is uh, around 360,000. So even though it's a vast, large island, it's not so many people living here and most of them live here in the in the capital area of Reykjavik in the whole capital region there are uh, the region has a population of 230,000 approximately so there are only bit more than 100,000 living in the rest of the country. But we have um, the city of Reykjavik, the capital, with uh, 129,000 population. And then we have Mosfellsbær and uh, Seltjörnanes, Kopparfogur, Gardabær, Alftanes, Hafnarfjörður. Also, some of the biggest cities in the in the country. They are all located here. But um, but there are, of course, uh, town 
parts and settlements around the rest of the country as well. And then we have the biggest Akureyri located at this uh, bay here. Akureyri has 19,000 people as inhabitants. And uh, we have another region called Reykjanes Bayer. It consists of three separate towns, but uh, in 1994, I think, they were like considered parts of the same um, municipality or something. So it was Keflavik, Keflavik and uh, Njartavik, also Havnir. Havnir also is a historical, it's important for historical reasons, I guess. And uh, together, there are 18,000 people living in this um, area. Then we have Selfos. Located close to the thing Vallavatn. Approximately Selfos. In Selfos, there are 7,500 people living, approximately. And then we have Akranes. And uh, Borgarnes. You know what? I'll zoom in a bit. So we have Stykkis Holmut. And uh, Olafsvik. In Westfjordir, the Western Fjords region, we have Isafjordur. region called the uh, Norderland Vestra. We have a town called Saudar, no sorry, Saidar, I think it's pronounced. Saidar Kroger. Akureyri, like I mentioned, is the biggest town in Northland Eistra, this part of the country. Also here we have Husavik, also in Northland Eistra. about as well. I think it has a lot of history. History from the uh, first settlements of Iceland in the 9th century. And um, I also read about a small place that is not a town or city or anything, but it has some historical importance, I guess. It's not far as we could here. In the 
the eastern part of the country we have uh, Egils Stadir, biggest town of uh, the eastern region called uh, Österland. Also Eskifjärdur should be located here. Also Heaven. I think Heaven means harbor. It's hum in Swedish. To the south, to the very south we have Vik. Place that I actually visited when I was visiting Iceland. are called Heimai. Close to Selfos we have Kveragerdi. And here we have the very historical important place. It's actually a national park today. Think Verdir. something called Sandvik Continental Bridge. It's a footbridge where you can you can walk between the continents in a way, between the Eurasian and North American continent. Across the ridge. I also want to mention something about this island read about it and found it really interesting. LA. This is where the last uh, the last uh, species specimens of the great oak was observed. Uh, it was in 18, uh, 1844. So this is a bird that's now extinct. The two the last specimens of this uh, flightless alcid bird were found here and sadly enough killed. At least the last two confirmed specimens. It was a bird that uh, resembled the penguins but they weren't actually related to penguins but they were like you could think they were some kind of penguins when you saw it, I guess. I'd like to talk a bit more about this area here. Think well here. Okay. Just make this uh, this uh, lake. make this lake look a bit more visible. Um, think Vetlir was actually the capital of um, the Icelandic Commonwealth after the first settlers. And um, it said that it was the first 
settlers came in uh, 1874 AD and it was a uh, Norwegian Norse chieftain called uh, Ingolfr Arnarsson and his wife uh, had to wake Froda Dottir slaves or thralls trailer as it was called then in the Nordic countries but uh, they weren't the first here but uh, according to the land now book the book of settlements in Iceland written in the um, 11th century Ingolfur Arnarsson sailed to this island and to decide where to settle. He um, he threw his two carved pillars into the sea and promised to settle where they were brought ashore. And then two of his slaves searched the coast, the entire coast, for three years before finding the pillars in a small bay. And this bay eventually became Reykjavik, the smoky bay. So he settled with his family and slaves here somewhere. But then there were a lot of uh, migration from Norway to Iceland during the next century or decades probably and it's said that um, many people from Norway they were not so happy with the the king of Norway, Harald Fairhair, who was the king in Norway between 872 to 930, also considered to be the king who united Norway into one kingdom, according to the Icelandic sagas. So a lot of people weren't very happy with that, so they they moved to this new discovered island and after a while they had settled all, all around the island and um, and uh, then the descendants of uh, Ingolfur dominated the, this region of the southwest island and that became the most powerful family in the country and uh, other chieftains, they felt the need for um, a general assembly to limit the Ingolfer power. So they established this um, this parliament in Thinkval in Thinkvelir, and they chose this place because by then it was like centered so the people didn't have to tra travel s too far from the settlements the different areas or actually those living in the east they had to go quite far to to reach the capital like 17 days I think it took but anyway they started this uh, Althinki Althing, um, and it's actually today the oldest surviving national parliament. It was founded in 930, but uh, this claim is shared with the Parliament of Isle of Man. I read so it's a bit disputed, but so for more.
more than 1,000 years they've had this parliament, but it, now it's moved to Reykjavik. It's a new capital. But uh, this was actually located in, in the Rift Valley of the two continents. And today it's a natural park where you can go and um, see these uh, continental plates drift apart with uh, some centimeter a year, I guess. And there are one place here, or maybe more places, that's said to be so still so close to each other, so you can stand with one foot on the the North American continent and the one foot on the Eurasian continent. I'm not sure if that's completely true, but it's a cool thing to see, definitely. And there are a lot of uh, things in this area you can visit to the Geysir, the Great Geysir. periodically spouting hot spring. There are a lot of geysers around uh, around Iceland, but this one is the most famous and it's given name for this phenomenon, geyser. Also there are beautiful waterfall called the Gullfoss. So like I said, the, the mid-Atlantic reach goes like this. and crosses the Thinkveldir area. I think I'll zoom out a bit so you can see the entire map again. This uh, old books, the Landnáma book from 11th century and uh, also the Islandinga book, the book of the Icelanders from the 12th century are fantastic historical documents uh, that uh, tells a lot about the history of the Norse settlement of Iceland and also tells a bit of uh, the people living here before the Norse arrived. And of course some some of these things can be myths. Even though those were written so long time ago, it was still around two hundred years after the settlement, or even three hundred years after the settlement. But it's said that before the Vikings arrived there were some Irish monks living here called the Papars by the Vikings and um, they found some books and bells and croziers from them and uh, it's not totally clear if they were there when the Vikings arrived but at least they had been there and now it's been um, some archaeological evidence that there were people here even in the 9th century and um, before Ingolfer arrived and decided to stay, to settle here the island had been discovered by a Swedish Viking explorer called Garvar Svavarsson and he said to be the first to sail around the whole island and by doing that he discovered it was an island and uh, Gardar stayed for one winter in and built a house here in Husavik and when he left returned to Sweden um, one of his men decided to stay 
and he was called um, uh, Natfari, Nautfari, and he stayed with two slaves here, what was called the uh, Nautfaravik. So you can consider Natfa Nautfari to be the first permanent resident of Iceland. Then, um, also, it's according to Land Nama Bauk, Iceland was discovered by a Nor Norwegian or Norse um, Viking called Nadod, who sailed to one of the first settlers on the Faroe Islands, but he drifted to the east coast of Iceland. And he called it Snailand, the Snowland. But he didn't stay. Yeah, and Gardar uh, Svavarsson, he called the island uh, Gardar's Holmi. Holmi, that's um, island. So Gardar's Island, it was called before, before it was called Iceland. And uh, it's also told in the stories that the Norwegian um, sailed here, and he was called Raufna Floki Vilgerdarsson. He settled for one winter on the Barta Strand. Barta Strand is located here on the Vestfjordir Peninsula. So there were a couple of people that had been here before Ingolfur Arnarsson and his wife Halfaik Frothadottir and their slaves. Established in 930, and it was the capital of the Icelandic Commonwealth for a couple of centuries. Then, in 1262, Iceland became a part of the Norwegian, came under Norwegian rule. And in 1397, Nor Norway was united with uh, Sweden. Norway and Denmark were were um, united already, and then Sweden and Finland, I guess. So then all the Nordic countries were part of the Kalmar Union bec between 1397 to 1523, when Sweden left the Union. Then it came under Danish rule again, or Norwegian, but um, since 1814. Following the Napoleonic Wars, Denmark and Norway was broken up into separate kingdoms. So then it came under Danish rule and was part of the Danish kingdom until 1944 when it was declared an independent republic. But the uh, Althingi survived all these uh, different uh, periods, except for, I guess, 40 years, at the beginning of the 19th century. I think it was discontinued, but then opened again in the middle of the 19th century. And it's really interesting with these uh, Irish monks that had been here before, and some evidence or some um, clues to that is uh, the name Vest uh, Mana Eyjar, probably, because uh, Vest Vestman was something the Norse called uh, people from Ireland, Scotland, and uh, Britain, and 
also there's a small island off the eastern coast called the Pap A. Could also refer to these Papas. I think I just um, show you on this map the uh, some names of the bays and fjords here. Here we have a big uh, bay called uh, Breidafjordur. I guess it means the wide bay. Here is uh, Faxaflowy. Here's Hunaflowy. Skagafjordur. Sveidakrok. Eyjafjörður Skjálfandi Öxarfjörður Þistilfjörður Bakkaflói Vopnafjörður Gerard's Flowey Hovnafjörður Now when we can see the whole map I can also show you where the different regions are located So this is Vestilfjörður The West Fjords This is uh, Norðurland Vestra western part of Northland and uh, Northland Eistra the eastern part and uh, Eisterland east part and uh, Sutherland southern part and this is called the uh, Sudurnes, Southern Peninsula, or Reykjanes Peninsula. This is called the um, Höfudborgarsveidid. So that's the uh, capital, Höfudborgar. And Sveidid, I think, means area. Geographical area. And this part is called uh, Westerland. I think this patch is dry now, so the last thing I want to draw on this map is the Myrdals Jökull. Iceland once. It's really cool. I really enjoyed it. And uh, I only visited this area here to the southwest. The airport is located here, close to Keflavik. And I saw this uh, fantastic lava landscape. Because I can't find anything like it. Many, many places.
exercises and uh, I took a swim in the blue lagoon and I went to Thinkverdi National Park I saw the waterfall and and this uh, historical place and I also traveled along the coast I think you could see these islands from the coast, I'm not sure. And I uh, went to Beek. And there's it's a beautiful and famous uh, beach with black sand. From the lava. Of the volcanoes. Located here in this area. And one thing I remember is um, when you were traveling along this road, there were like, you can really see super high mountains to the left. If you were tra traveling from the east here, there were like these huge mountains. And um, on these mountains, there were huge rocks, almost round. And it looked like they they could uh, continue to roll down the mountain any time. But the thing was that just underneath those rocks there were small houses and I mean farms, settlements. So. Now, when I see that Eja uh, Fjallajökull was located here, in one of these mountains, I just can't help but worry what happened to that they were safe, all those houses and those who lived there. What happened to those rocks? But I guess people in Iceland are very used to to geological changes. It's a quite young island, if you speak in geological terms, I guess. But I've been fascinated for a very long time by Iceland, even since I was a kid. And that's probably why I wanted to go there was uh, one of the first uh, countries outside Sweden that I visited and um, I guess um, that's why I got so that's why I got uh, really inspired and happy when I got the request from Hjalmar Thor Helgason I got the a lot of really nice encouraging comments from from you lately so and also I started to think about Iceland again it reminded me of a lot of things I used to listen to a lot of Icelandic music when I was younger so thank you for reminding me of that it was nice to rediscover Iceland in a way and I haven't been looking so detailed on it before. I didn't know so much, but I've read a lot now, and it's really interesting with the, with the history and the sagas, the old uh, Norse Viking sagas, and uh, the Landnama book, Islanding. you enjoyed this video and uh, sleep well take care see you soon